Hi, welcome to Wise Guys. This video is on uh, trigonometric functions and it is a practice question. So here's the question. You can pause the video, work through the question, and then turn the video back on and I will work through the question with you. Okay, so here we are. Um, first thing we have to do is solve for C. We can see that we have A, which is 2, B, which is the square root of 3, and we need to find C. And remembering the Pythagorean theorem, we know that C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. So we have the square root of a squared is 4, and b squared is the square root of this thing, or I should say is the square root of 3 squared, which is 3. So we end up with c equaling the square root of 7. And we leave it as the square root of 7 because that is an exact answer, and we need our answers in exact form. So this then is the square root of 7. So now we're going to walk through the steps and it's sometimes important just to remind yourself of what's what. I always recommend people just write this down. Cos of the angle equals adjacent over hypotenuse. Sine of the angle equals opposite over hypotenuse and the tan of the angle equals opposite over adjacent. It just helps to tr to sort of twig your memory and rem remind yourself, oh yeah, that's what that's what's going on here. So the cos of the angle adjacent over hypotenuse this is theta, the angle is theta, so the side that's adjacent, side that's touching this angle is A, which is 2. So we have 2, and the, the hypotenuse is the square root of 7. Now normally you don't leave a radical in the denominator, so what you do is you multiply top and bottom by the square root of 7. So square root of 7, square root of 7, and you end up with 2 times the square root of 7, and these two multiplied together give you 7. So that should be your answer. So I'm actually not going to walk through these steps. Just know that if you have a radical in the denominator, you should get rid of it. If we have anything um, too weird, I'll walk through the steps, but if I have a radical, I'm just probably going to leave it in the denominator because I just want to walk through these steps. The sine of the angle is opposite over hypotenuse. And this is, of course, the side opposite theta. So the side opposite theta is the square root of 3. So we have the square root of 3 over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 7. So now, actually, we have a whole lot of square roots going on here. So I am going to walk through the steps to clear this up. We want to get rid of this square root on the denominator again. So we're going to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 7. So on the top, we have the square root of 3 multiplied by the square root of 7. You multiply those two together and you end up with the square root of 21. That is divided by these two which are multiplied. Square root of 7 times the square root of 7 gives you 7. And that would be your answer. Tan of theta. Again, tan of theta is opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite of theta is the square root. Oh, oh. 
opposite over adjacent. There you go. Square root of 3 over 2. Now, we don't have a radical in the denominator, so we don't have to do anything. This is good enough. <coughs> Cos of theta. This is supposed to be, let's just fix this, the cos of alpha. There we go. So we're doing the cos of alpha, and that actually looks like a mess, so let's just cross, cross it out. Cos of alpha, all right? So the cos of alpha, alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse. It's the side adjacent alpha. Side adjacent alpha is the square root of 3. So we have the square root of 3 over the hypotenuse, which is the square root of 7. So now you can look at this and you say, oh, you know what? That looks like what we did up here, which it is. Square root of 3 over the square root of 7. So again, you're going to multiply top and bottom. So I said I wasn't going to do this, but it looks like I am. Square root of 7 over square root of 7. So you're multiplying this piece. On the top, square root of 3 times the square root of 7 gives you the square root of 21. And in the denominator, when we multiply these two together, we get 7, and that's the final answer. The sine of alpha. That is opposite over hypotenuse. And again, unfortunately, we're going to be over the square root of 7 again. So I guess we're just going to have to deal with it. Opposite is, so the side opposite alpha is our 2. 2 over the square root of 7. And let's just walk through the steps. So we're going to get rid of the square root of 7, so we're multiplying it by the square root of 7 over the square root of 7. 2 times the square root of 7 gives us 2 square root of 7, and we're going to divide it by 7, and that's our answer. The tan of alpha is opposite over adjacent, and that's opposite alpha, so that's 2 over adjacent, which is b, square root of 3. Again, to get rid of the square root of 3 in the denominator, we multiply top and bottom by the square root of 3. These multiply together, and we end up with 2 square root of 3. Square root of 3 times the square root of 3 is 3, and that's your answer cosecant of alpha. Okay, so the cosecant of alpha, remembering that the cosecant is the inverse of the sine. So we know that the sine, let's just walk back to the sine for a second here. <coughs> we know that the sine of alpha, we started with 2 over the square root of 7. Now you know that the cosecant is the inverse of the sine. So that means we're going to flip this. If we flip this, you can see the 2 is going to be in the denominator. So you don't have to go through all these steps. You say, oh, here we go. This is what I started with. All I have to do is turn it upside down, and I'll end up with the cosecant. So let's just do that step. We're just going to say, ah, square root of 7 over 2. But let's look at it another way if you don't like that approach. Since the sine of alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, the cosecant of alpha has to be the flip of this, which is hypotenuse over opposite, right? The inverse of the sine. So the hypotenuse, we know, is the square root of 7. <coughs> and the opposite, the side opposite alpha is 2. So there we go. 
two ways of getting this answer. And because the radicals in the numerator were fine. Now the secant of theta. So the secant of theta is the inverse of the cos. So it's 1 over the cos of theta. So let's take a look at the cos of theta. With the cos of theta, we started out with 2 over the square root of 7. The only reason we took these steps was to get rid of the radical. So 2 over the square root of 7, and we're going to inverse this to get the secant. You can see if we inverse it, we'll have a 2 in the denominator, so we don't have to worry about these steps. So we end up with the square root of 7 over 2, which, of course, is the same as the cosecant of us alpha. But you don't have to actually think about that too much. Just think about the steps. What do I have to do to get this? That's all that you have to do. All right, so I hope that was helpful. And uh, that's just one question. That's all we're doing here. That was presented to you by Wise Guys. I hope you have a super day. And if you have any questions, you can contact the Learning Assistance Center at 632-2251.